Now I'm going to talk about the calculus of exponential and logarithmic functions and we're going to go through a lot of material in one shot here and I have this organized on this page you see on the top row I have natural base logarithms the derivative and the integral of natural base logarithms and then I have the derivative and the integral of base b logarithms and then the same thing with natural base exponents and with base b exponents and we'll go through through each of these and as we work through the theory we'll come back and fill in this page we're going to start here we're gonna take this function y equals e to the x and I'm gonna tell you one thing this function has an amazing property if y equals e to the x then dy dx equals get this the derivative is e to the x the exponential function y equals e to the x is its own derivative what that means is if we were to graph this, this function would cross the axis at 1 because it's an exponential function and then it grows very rapidly like this and by the time you get to x equals 1 you're up here to a value of e about 2.718 so at x equals 1, I'm sorry at x equals 0 the function has a value of 1 and it also has a slope of 1. At x equals 1 the function has a value of 2.718 it also has a slope of 2.718 this function is its own derivative and this function and constant multiple variations of this function such as this y equals a e to the x like y equals 3 e to the x or y equals 5 e to the x that would also be its own derivative and, and th that's the only class of functions that has this property the function is its own derivative so let's come back to our chart and fill this in this is our starting point the derivative of e to the x is e to the x and we'll see that everything else follows from that well if the derivative of e to the x is e to the x then it follows that the integral of e to the x is equal to e to the x plus c we need to include our constant of integration there and we can do a simple ex example with that if we're told that that the integral of e to the x is equal to e to the x plus c then we could evaluate for example the integral from 2 to 4 of e to the x dx and I, I should have a dx in there as well the integral from 2 to 4 of e to the x dx is simply going to be e to the x evaluated from 2 to 4 so that's e to the fourth minus e squared and you can work that on, out on a calculator it comes out to about 47 0.209 but we can deal with integrals uh, indefinite and definite integrals of the exponential function all right now think about the logarithmic function y equals the natural log of x and let's rearrange this or basically let's just take e to the left side and e to the right side and that gives us e to the y equals x because e to the ln of x is just x now let's differentiate here and we'll differentiate with implicit differentiation so we're going to take the derivative of both sides with respect to x the derivative of e to the y is just e to the y and then times dy dx by the chain rule and the derivative of e to the x of course is just one <coughs> or excuse me the derivative of x on the right side is just one so now let's rearrange this algebraically and solve for dy dx and that's very easy to do dy dx is 1 over e to the y and now look here e to the y is just x so this is just 1 over x so we've said that if y is equal to natural log of x then dy dx is 1 over x so let's go back and fill that in on our other page up at the top the derivative of the natural log of x is simply 1 over x. Now it's worth noting while we're here that something immediately follows from that. If the derivative of the natural log of x is 1 over x, then the integral of 1 over x dx has to be the natural log plus c. This is a fact worth noting. It's not an exponential or logarithmic function. This 1 over x right here so it doesn't show up on this chart but it is worth noting we can integrate 1 over x dx and the integral is the natural log and that's significant because we're typically integrating uh, simple functions like this with the power rule but we can't integrate 
This is the integral of x to the negative 1 dx. We can't integrate that with the power rule because we would end up with a zero denominator. But it turns out we can integrate it, and we just did, by taking the reverse process of this derivative. Okay, next idea. Remember the change of base rule. Log base b of a is equal to the natural log of a over the natural log of b every single time. Well, let's differentiate this. The derivative with respect to x of log base b of x will have to be the derivative with respect to x of ln of x over ln of b. We're just applying the change of base rule to this function. And note here, natural log of b is a constant. So I can just bring that out front of my derivative. So I'm going to have 1 over natural log of b times the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of x. And I know how to differentiate the natural log of x. The, de the derivative of the natural log we just saw is 1 over x. So we end up with 1 over x ln b. And that's our answer. So just a quick example the derivative with respect to x of log base 3 of x is 1 over x times the natural log of 3. Now let's come back and fill in our chart here. We're right here. The derivative of a base b log is 1 over x ln b. All right, now think about this function, y equals b to the x, a base b exponent. How do we differentiate that? Well, b to the x can be rewritten as e to the x ln b. Any base, any base exponent, any base exponential function can be rewritten as a base e exponential function like that. And we can differentiate this with the chain rule. The derivative with respect to x of b to the x will be the derivative with respect to x of e to the x ln b. And we know how to differentiate an exponential function. This is going to be e to the x ln b times the derivative of the inner function. The derivative of x ln b is just ln b. So we end up writing it like this. Take note that e to the x ln b is our original function. So I'm going to substitute that in right there. And I get b to the x times the natural log of b. So if y equals b to the x, then the derivative is b to the x ln b. And let's come back here and fill in our chart. The derivative of b to the x is b to the x times the natural log of b. And now we need to see how to integrate a base b exponent, the integral of b to the x dx. Well, how do we do this? We start here. The derivative with respect to x of a base b exponent we just said was b to the x times the natural log of b. And I'm going to rearrange this. Just move the pieces around algebraically to get this. 1 over ln b times the differential of b to the x is equal to b to the x dx. And then I can integrate both sides. I recognize that 1 over ln of b is constant, so I integrate there. And I integrate here. And this gives me 1 over ln of b, my constant stays out front times b to the x plus c, because the integral of this differential is just that. And then on the right, watch this. On the right, I have the integral of b to the x dx. Okay, And that is what I was looking for. That was my original question. What is the integral of b to the x dx? And now I know it's this. It's 1 over ln b times b to the x plus c. So I can come back here and fill it in. I'm going to write it as b to the x times 1 over natural log of b plus c. Now for the sake of completeness, I'm going to fill in these last two up here. Those are actually a little bit more advanced topics, but I'm going to tell you that the integral of the natural log of x is x ln x minus x plus c. And I'm not going to prove that, but you can show that by differentiating this and showing that you get the natural log function. And I'll also just tell you this, the integral of a base b log is x ln x minus x over ln of b 
plus c. And again, you could you could differentiate this and simplify it down to a base b log. But that's it. The calculus of exponential and logarithmic functions.